What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Doing things a little bit differently tonight. We are actually going to be talking about how you can gain more confidence throwing big old baits like this guy right here. Stay tuned. All right, y'all, first and foremost, make sure to stick around till the end of the video where we actually get a couple catches on this guy right here. Just our second time taking it out. Oh my gosh, that fish did not eat it. Oh, he got it, he got it. There we go, it's a good one. A uh, couple hour session at sunset, we get two bass on this thing, just literally pond hopping neighborhood ponds. And uh, one of the biggest ways I got confidence in throwing these bigger baits was watching either friends in person or people in vlogs fishing these baits and seeing exactly where they threw them, exactly what they were doing with their retrieve. And that helped me so much in having the confidence to really throw these on a regular basis and start catching fish on these big baits. Now, one thing to mention is right now is the perfect time of year. We're getting into fall. The water temps are cooling down. May have already where you're at if you're up north or if you're down south like we are in Texas. It is the perfect time absolutely to start throwing big baits. These bass are feeding up for the winter. They're getting big and they are ready to eat big meals like this glide bait right here. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about what we did getting started with big baits. Soft plastics, hard plastics, how we fish them. First, we're going to talk about gear. So let's talk about what not to use first, because it's very common to go grab a one, two, three ounce swim bait and not have a rod that is suited for it. So take a look at whatever rod you've got, all right? This is a seven, six heavy, fast action rod rated to up to one ounce lures. And specifically it says swimmers, frogs, and jigs. So this being a jig rod, I've got a three quarter ounce flipping jig, which is actually a pretty heavy jig on this setup right here. Now, I wouldn't want to go throw in a three, four ounce swim bait like this phony shed right here on that rod. The tip is just going to be bending like crazy. Just walking around the pond, you feel like you're going to break your rod. You go for the first cast. It's not going to be pretty. So my advice is search around and get a swim bait dedicated setup. You need a broomstick. You need something big. You need something heavy. We've got a couple seven, 10 heavies. These are Mojo Bass uh, specific swim bait rods by St. Croix. The one thing about swim bait fishing is there's that barrier to entry, which is usually you got to go for some expensive gear that's going to last and hold up to throwing this heavy artillery. So what we did, specifically Devin, my wife, <laughs> shopped around on Facebook and found this 13 fishing rod for $40. This is an eight foot heavy rod rated to throw four to eight ounce baits. So this was what we did. Balling on a budget, we went ahead and got a cheap rod to start. Next up is reels. I've seen quite a few people and I'm only going to talk about Shimano because that's what we throw. But I'm sure you can look up something like what are the best bait casters to throw big swim baits and you'll find some great results. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I see quite a bit of people within the forums within the swim bait forums online, throwing Corrado's, Corrado K, the 200 size spool, which is great. You, you need a little bit more line capacity or you would prefer a little bit more line capacity. Oftentimes you're throwing heavier line, which we'll talk about in just a second, which is gonna take up more space on your spool. You wanna get those long casts. You have the most amount of time to be creeping those big baits back in or burning them. It depends on what you're throwing, right? Uh, and for those fish to really inspect and decide whether they want to go after that bait or not. So long casts are your friend, therefore line capacity is a plus and the Corrado K is a 200. Now let me talk to you guys about our main, our primary swim bait reels. We got a couple Tranks 200s right here. This is a 201, which just represents left-handed being an odd number for Shimano. This is a 200, which is a right-hander. They're both the 200s pool size. You can get this reel in a 300 or a 400. We actually have a 400 right here with the power handle that we have the big phony tied on as well. All you want is a reel with some good strength, quality components inside, and it's not gonna get torn apart just from throwing these big baits all day, wearing out the brakes, or handling all the pressure from the potential fish that you're gonna have biting these baits right here. You need a lot of cranking power you got to have the right reel for that. The Shimano Tranks is our number one go-to. We're getting close to talking about the baits and confidence, but next up is line. Real quick, I wouldn't go lower than 15 pound fluorocarbon if you're throwing whew, some of these two, three, four ounce baits, unless the fish in your area are extremely line shy and there's really not much cover structure that you're going to get and torn up in because you will get broken off. These fish you're going after and targeting with big baits can absolutely break you off. I would grab some 20 pound fluorocarbon, so a lot of strength. One of the main things I'm worried about when I'm throwing the big baits is just actually losing the lure when you cast it. That brings up another point, why we choose fluoro over braid. Whenever I go and cast and your bait is flying out at full speed and then you get a bird's nest, well, with the braid, there's no stretch 
catch and there's a good chance your knot will fail and you could potentially lose a bait like this that costs over $100 in an instant. I say if your preference is braid, go for it. But we use that fluorocarbon for that little extra stretch right there. And also depending on what baits you're throwing, the braid floats, the floral will sink, so you might get a different fall rate with your baits. So we've talked about rods just long enough for you to know you need a beefy setup. I recommend something like an eight foot heavy. They make eight foot sixes. You search around, do your due diligence, see what type of baits you wanna throw and get one that is rated to throw something of that weight caliber. Next, the reels, 200 spool sizes, fantastic. You want something that's gonna be reliable. Shimano tranks cannot go wrong. And then you talk about the line. We prefer 20, 25 pound fluorocarbon. Seaguar uh, Brazex is what we've been throwing on our tranks lately. The reason I wanted to bore you guys with a lot of gear talk first is because until you have some confidence inspiring gear you're not going to be throwing these baits and anticipating a bite you're going to be worried that you're going to break your rod you're going to think that you're going to lose your bait because you don't have the right line you're going to think that a fish is going to break you off you're going to feel like wow if i get a bite on this reel it could literally break <laughs> so we have to talk about this but now we're going to get into the baits which i have over here i want to say one of the first larger baits we started throwing was the jackal ganterelle if you guys search back a little ways you'll see us catch so many fish on the channel with this bait right here uh, springtime was fantastic fall right now would be great but we've got more interest in almost throwing bigger and badder baits as time has gone on so this was just the appetizer that got us started this is the jackal ganterelle jr it also comes in some different colorways i I really like this one here. I believe it is called the Ghost Gill. This thing has been beaten up, bashed up, bite marks all over it. It's missing both fins because we've bashed against rocks in the boat. Uh, I mean, it, it has seen better days, but it has caught a lot of fish. This bait right here has got us between one and five pounders all day, man. I mean, it'll get the big ones, it'll get the little ones. It will really get your confidence up. A lot of times what I like to do when I'm pond fishing with this guy is focus primarily right along the bank, just casting parallel. Maybe there's a little bit of grass in your spot so you can't necessarily hit that parallel, go out at about a 45, start creeping it nice and slow. Every once in a while, get a quick half whip of the reel. It's gonna make it hit a little U-turn and I'm telling you, you'll get the bites right then and there. Next, we'll talk about glide baits. I would just recommend if you guys get a glide bait, something like this guy right here to start off with, the Molex 178 SS, which is just slow sink is a fantastic option and actually this variation of it right here this color the trout caught my new seven pound PB so I cannot recommend this highly enough the fact is you guys can grab this at Carl's bait and tackle for just over 20 bucks I think it's less than 20 bucks if you're a Carl's Club member so this is an absolute no-brainer if you want to talk about getting into the glide bait or the big bait game the weight on these is probably two and a half ounces so again you want to have a rod that's rated for probably up to three ounce baits I would try and throw these guys sunrise or sunset for your best odds. If you're really trying to go out there, and again, this video is all about gaining confidence in the bigger baits. What happens is a lot of the fish the bass are feeding on, they hug up in the shallows and they try and stay in the cover. They try and stay in the grass near the trees uh, and bunch up where they can escape, where they can hide. And so those bass, they come into the shallows and feed early morning. And then also again at sunset, and it's not to say you can't catch them midday, but if you're looking at your best odds and you really want to try and catch a fish on these big baits for the first time, that's when I recommend you throwing these guys. Otherwise you might need to just target cover. And what I mean by that is let's say you're going out midday. I just recommend targeting some shade, try and throw under those trees, try and throw near the vegetation right along the edge. If you've got hydrilla, if you've got that grass that extends out a little ways that you're pond try and get it as close to that grass edge that's where they're going to be that's where these bass are going to be ambushing that bait fish and be very prone to attacking these guys right here now what i'm going to talk about next which is some soft plastics one of the first soft plastic larger swim baits that devin and i started throwing and had zero confidence in at the very beginning, by the way, was the Working Class Zero Citizen 6. Very intimidated to throw this when we first started off, and now it's one of our confidence baits. We literally feel like we'll get as many bites on this as throwing a Texas rig or a jig, depending on the situations, because of how many hits we've got on this bait. But we didn't have a lot of confidence in these at first. It really took a friend of ours, Jared, down in Austin, showing us the ways of the soft plastic swim bait. So the best way to fish these for us so far has been a long cast okay again target those grass edges target structure clear water is your friend with a lot of these big baits by the way because they have that drawing power in them and they'll really draw those fish in from across the ponds and lakes so these guys what i recommend to do to gain some confidence is actually not to fish them like cast and reel cast and reel you certainly can but these soft plastics are really great for getting down in the thick stuff where these bass are hiding in the hydrilla out deep, slow rolling. You're gonna catch some giants doing this, I can all but guarantee it. What you wanna do, cast these things out, let them fall with no slack in your line. You wanna feel when it hits the bottom. And it might take a second, you know, you might be fishing 15, 20 foot of water, you might be fishing five feet, just depends on where you're at. Now, let it fall to the bottom, slow creep it. You wanna be feeling 
the grass that you're cutting through. You wanna be feeling the rock. You wanna be feeling it out with this right here. So weedless, these guys. These one, whenever you've got a single hook soft swim bait like this, very weedless, I mean, you can get through just about anything and those big bass are hugging the cover down there. So. All you're gonna feel most times with these soft plastic baits, just so you're aware, is a little tick. You're gonna feel their lips closing on the line because what they do is they're swimming behind it, they decide they're gonna go for it, they literally just inhale the whole bait and all you feel is their lips close. You probably second guess yourself, was that grass I just went through or was it a bite? And so what we like to do is if we think we feel a bite, we give the reel a quick couple turns. So what happens is if you got caught up in a little bit of grass and you give it those quick two turns, you pull right through it, you get out of the grass, you could end up right in a fish's face and you might get a bite right then and there. But let's say there's a bass on the hook, you feel that tick and you crank down a couple times and you still feel that weight, you hammer the hook set because there's oftentimes a larger hook in these soft plastics. There's baits out there that have the hooks exposed, just exposed jig hooks. Those are good for the hookup ratio, but gonna be a little less weedless than there's guys like this where you put something like a, an owner beast hook inside of. One of the best soft plastic swim baits on the market that's actually readily available that you can get after watching this video is the 316 Rising Sun. We've got it in a couple uh, different colors. I would say go ahead and pick some of these guys up in the lavender color. The lavender has been fantastic. This is the five inch Rising Sun, by the way, and I believe you wanna pair that up with an eight aught owner beast hook. And then you'll get a setup like this and you can just be creeping those soft plastics right along the bottom and start getting those hits. All right guys, I hope that has helped you gain a little bit of confidence in what you need to start throwing this stuff or how to fish some of these baits to get going and absolutely catch your PB this fall. I wanna tell you, this is the time. Don't wait, don't wait until winter when you can expect less hits every time you go out in the water so cold these fish don't wanna move. You'll catch giants, but Right now is the time you will get hits most evenings you take these baits out. Most mornings you take these baits out, you're gonna secure a catch and you don't wanna let this go by. You don't wanna wait till winter to grab you a heavy swim bait setup and you could have got it while the getting was good, man. In the fall feeding frenzy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link you guys our favorite rod and reel combo at the top of the description and in the pinned comment if you guys wanna take a look at it. It also helps support the channel if you purchase through those links and they're fantastic links that many have bought through on Amazon. You don't have to worry about whether it's legit or not, you know you're getting the best stuff. With that being said, we're gonna cut into the fishing portion of today's video. We literally met up with the viewer just the other day. We fished the evening. It only was like an hour or two's worth of fishing with this guy right here. Hopefully you guys will have a little bit more confidence in some big baits after literally seeing me go to a neighborhood pond and smack them on this guy right here. All at the same time, Dylan was throwing a chatterbait right next to me and we got the same amount of fish while I was there. So he got two, I got two. You would assume a chatterbait would just be raking them up, confidence bait for many, and yet this got just as many hits, guys. So go ahead, grab you a big swim bait setup and enjoy the rest of today's video. Making the first few casts tonight with the uh, Defy Black 13 fishing rod, eight footer. Eight footer tonight, how about that? Get some good casts. That's a little breezy tonight with some cloud cover. This could be, this could truly be the phony shad's night. Might link up with the giant. Oh my God, we just got bumped. I don't know if y'all caught that, but we just got bumped. I'm over here talking loud. That doesn't help. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, man. Too easy. <laughs> well, I'm Weston, what's your name? Dylan. Dylan, nice to meet you, man. Yeah. First, you started fish like, just started? Just straight out of course. Dude, how cool and is that? And you were the first one I saw, and so Oh, no way. Wanted... Here, come on, walk it down. Let's, let's hit this thing. You gonna st uh, stick around until sunset, or? Yeah. Do you have any, um, what color are your cracking crawls? Like Okeechobee craw or something? Yeah, like you should put one on there, and it will give it. No, let me see. Bring it over here. I got you. It'll give it more action. You'll definitely yeah, get hit. Oh, you got the, okay, the swimmers are really good, but you kind of want to match it. Yeah, Okay, those. got these, okay. Oh, boom, Heck that yeah. should be kicking. That chatterbait should definitely do good too, because there's a lot of grass over there. You rip through that, dude, you'll have them. You'll get the first one on that thing tonight for sure. Oh, something just swirled on it, big time. Wow. Dang it. Hmm. Try that cast again. I'm sure that fish is gone, but that's him. Got him. I'm telling you. That's your first one on the chatterbait, right? Nice. Oh, he was barely hooked too. Look at that. Black and blue crushing it. Okay. Found him off the point, dude. That's perfect. See, through this grass, is, yeah, that's the that's spot. Right. He was sitting right that's on the grass. That's the spot. Good cast here. Right off that point on that side. Coming over to this one here. Bass might be hanging out waiting to ambush some smaller fish that come out of this little cove area, little cut in here. Definitely could get a bite on this cast right here. 
would not be surprised. Oh, just had one swirl on it. He didn't need it though. That could have been the, the one we were looking for right there. Dang, wasn't wrong about a fish being there, that's for sure, that was a prime spot. Let's go a little to the left this time. Oh my gosh, we just had a big swirl. Oh my gosh, that fish did not eat it. Oh, he got it, he got it, there we go. It's a good one. Oh, he's better than the one we caught yesterday, boys. There we go. All right. All right. Another solid one on the phone. Yes, he came back for it. <clears throat> That's what we're talking about. Sunset four pounders right there. Yep, I saw him whip after it, and I was like, he missed it, and he came back. I hit him with a little whip, just kept it steady. This is probably just going to go for three. Okay, so this one's not that bad. This one's three, point, uh, three pounds, seven ounce, so about three and a half. Yeah, about three and a half. I had called it a four in the water. I figured it might be four. It looked a little bit bigger, but hey, that's how it goes. There you go. So we got our first chatterbait fish tonight. We're over here smashing them on the big baits. It's a good old time out here in the urban Dell scene. Uh, Palomar knot. And that's the second fish on the phony. We saw that swirl. I thought I was not going to get a second opportunity with that fish. Just kept it cruising, kept it cruising. Got lucky. Let's get back in here. I'm gonna hit a couple more off of this corner before I walk it over there. <laughs> oh, dude, I can only imagine. Like, how long have you been back in? Uh, like a month or, oh, oh. dude, hold. Got him, he got him, bro, he came back for it. Did you hear me say, oh, I had a bite. Dude, two fish on this thing in one night, it's smaller. I think, oh man, I don't know if it is smaller. He's about the same. We are back to back threes over here with the pony shed, dude. Hey. <laughs> dude, this one's tiny. What the heck's going on out here? How are you hitting the phony shed? It's fall time, they're feeding up, dude. That's probably two and a quarter, two and a half tops. All right, two off the same point. See you, bud. Dude, this is so funny. Literally, two on the phony shed tonight in a pond, at a city pond. This, this isn't even a lake. Look at this thing. It's getting munched. And not by the biggest fish. Where is the sixes? Where is the sevens? <laughs> they do seem to be hanging up around the edge, but maybe I can draw a big in from out deep. I'm turning away from the wind so y'all can hear me. I'm gonna let that sink a little bit. It's a slow sinker. Um, both of those fish that hit, it was on like the second, like they, they went for it and missed it. And I just kept that creep consistent, maybe even gave it a little pop. And then boom, they got it the second time around. So guys, just be, don't like think you missed a bite and then get it out of the water and burn it in definitely keep it in front of them they'll be irritated and they'll go for it all right back to business and that wraps it up y'all quick closing statement glad you stuck around till the end because i want you guys to know if you're going to throw these big baits oftentimes what i've been doing lately and i've always heard from a lot of these swim bait guys as well is you're used to throwing your traditional stuff right go ahead grab your big bait combo and just take that to the pond uh or if you've got a bunch of rods on your boat and you're hitting the lake try and just use that swim bait hit a lot of the spots that you have confidence in and already catch fish at uh, don't be fooled by the fact that these baits are large. You'll still get hits by one pounders, two pounders, three pounders, but you're definitely going to cut out some of those dinks and you are going to be targeting the giants with these big baits so you have a better chance of finding them. You have a better chance of catching these smarter fish that have aged, been around. They've seen a lot of baits and they haven't seen too many of these off the wall, larger swim baits, very realistic, lifelike presentations. So you have a great shot at catching them. Fall is the perfect time, so please do not wait. Get yourself a setup. Check out the ones that we've linked in the description. Please share this video, guys. If you learned anything, I do appreciate it. Get you a setup, go hit the pond of the lake tonight, just throwing that bait, stay dedicated, throw in your confidence spots, and start catching some fish on these things. Till next time, see ya. Boom.